Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome to very one of the most spectacular games played by the latest version of Stockfish, the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine clover in a beautiful King's Indian defense, the orthodox variation, but today we see the fish again battling it out with the black pieces and that's exactly what you have been uh, searching for, that's exactly what you wanted to uh, watch here on my YouTube chess channel, you wanted to see more games played by the fish with the black pieces because of course we want to know how to defend ourselves against d4 against e4 also how to maybe control play the english opening how to play against the rate opening so basically everyone wants to have everything covered when we're playing as black we want to know what our direction is and i think the king's in the defense is getting back into the shape because in the previous games that i've seen by stockfish now especially in this orthodox this classical variation i think the king's in is playable again because many times stockfish is reaching great position in which there are many many tactical opportunities when there are tactical opportunities, of course, Stockfish will use them. Pay good attention to what the fish is doing here with the black piece. It's really one of the greatest games that I've seen played by Stockfish with the black piece. It's really, really an immortal chess game. So let's see now what happened with the white pieces. The clover engine opened with the move d4. Stockfish transposable is knight to f6. We have c4, g6, and after knight to c3, bishop to g7, e4, d6. We have now the normal variation of the king's Indian defense. Now knight to f3, uh, normal development. Now king side casting. Bishop to e2, the orthodox variation. And now we hit the center with the move e5. So now here Clover continues with kingside casting. This is of course uh, the most popular way. Now uh, Stoffers continues with this, I like to call it and I mentioned many times a provocative move. We're waiting now uh, why to do a reaction here in the center of the board. Of course if d takes e5 happens then it, it leads I think into two drawish position for both sides. So that's why here f move knight to c6 the main line in the king's Indian defense here from white's perspective is to expand in the center simply getting your space advantage now of course the main advantage of white is the spaces that you get here with this powerful central control with these three pawns that are very very uh, very very good here uh, for white so after move d5 of course black continues with the move knight to e7 and uh, here the basic concept we should really understand that black should attack the king side because you see the pawn chain uh, c7 d6 e5 e5 is always showing us the direction of the attack on the other hand white is cutting off here white is trying to attack on the queen side by praying b4 uh, a4 and similar stuff expanding simply on the queen side so it's really a beautiful opposite side attack game now after move knight to e7 we have this idea knight to e1 knight to d7 preparing f5 bishop to e3 f5 f3 and now f4 hitting the bishop bishop to f2 so okay, black is also now a space advantage on this side of the board, but the downside always in these types of structures for the king's indian is that you don't have any more pieces here on the queen side so you don't have even a knight here you don't have even a bishop here that's defending here so you're lacking in defenders the good side on the other hand for black is that our attack when we are attacking the king side is always an attack against the king and of course you want to attack your opponent's king even if you lose here from black's perspective the battle on the queen side even if you maybe lose as i said some opportunities here the attack of blacks is always always more dangerous because we're attacking the king and the king is of course the most valuable piece on the board so basically the whole concept of the king's indian is if black somehow really destroys now white on the king side then black is winning the game if black somehow doesn't make anything out of the, out of the attack then the space that, that white will get here on the queen side are simply i think positionally winning always for white so that's why uh black has to be really a tactical beast a tactical monster and you can guess who is the best tactical monster in the world it's of course stockfish 16 so let's see now how stockfish made progress here in this particular position of course g5 this is the way to go you see white is also attacking the queen side b4 we have knight to f6 so black is rerouting now the pieces towards the king side because that's the side that we're attacking attacking now so here c5 white is not losing any time any precious time white is simply expanding on the queen side really good move here by uh, clover also knight to g6 expanding also as i said simply rerouting here all of the pieces towards the king side and then strike with h5 g4 we have a4 here uh, you see clover is as i said not losing any precious time the clover is not losing any precious tempi here really, really good approach also by white we have h5 stockfish does the same so it's really really a beautiful sharp tactical game we have now c6 black is already challenged here white is already here white is already some kind of an attacking motif here because black's defense seems all almost like it's collapsing because white is i think slightly faster in the attack but as i said white's attack 
is dangerous, is good, is fast, is progressive, but it's attacking only pawns, it's attacking only rooks. Our attack from black's perspective here is always attacking the king. So that's, I think, the beauty about the king's Indian. White is faster, but basically it's almost like white is not attacking anything here. So it's really, really beautiful position. So after move c6, we have b takes c6. Stockfish slows down the pace of the attack a little bit by trading off the pawns. We have now d takes c6 and now bishop to e6, uh, not allowing here maybe the move bishop to c4 to happen by white. So after move bishop to e6, uh, here... Um, King to a8, uh, sorry, the king to h8 uh, can be played here by black, but uh, instead of this move, bishop to e6. But in my opinion, this is now really one of the most popular ways now to proceed. Although king to h8 has been played many, many times also in chess history, but bishop to e6 I think I really like because in order to make something on light horse, white has to lose another maybe valuable tempo. White has to regroup somehow in order to attack the pieces. If in some lines maybe knight to d5 happens, then we simply trade it off and continue with our attack here on the on the king side. So after bishop to e6, we have bishop to a6 by the clover engine. Here, clover is trying to attack the uh, rook on b7 and then to pick up now the pawn on a7 but stockfish is simply ignoring the threat plays now the beautiful g4 this is the way to go in the king's indian you don't evaluate material you don't evaluate pawns you don't evaluate how many pieces you have lost you just evaluate the possibility of the attack you just evaluate the activity that you, of the pieces that you have on the board and that's exactly how you should play the king's indian don't Hesitate, don't wait here because after move bishop to b7, okay, Stockfish says, show me what you got. I'll just continue with my pressure here. g3, this is the way you go. After h takes g3, we have now f takes g3, and now comes already, already a tricky moment of this particular game. What should y do? For instance, let's see, I think, a bad move. Bishop to e3. This wasn't played in the game, but if you don't want to react in any ways, if you don't want to do anything, if you want to keep your bishop on the board here on uh, e3, you see now that after a couple more moves, Clover will lose the dark square bishop, will give it up. So that's why I'm showing you this line because probably many of you are asking yourself the question, why is white not keeping the dark square bishop on the board? Why is white maybe uh, going into a different line. After move bishop to e3, look what happens. We have this stunning idea. Knight to g4 is winning the game on spot. That's the beauty of the king's Indian. As I said, attack, attack, attack. Look at this. After f takes g4, we have this idea. Queen to h4. Getting the queen into the game, you're covering, maybe you can guess the next move, probably look at this, rook to f3, rook takes f3, queen comes here on h2, you have to step back and now with h takes g4, this is almost, almost losing immediately, look at this, you can maybe try bishop to g1 uh, to attack the queen, but now we have this resource, bishop to c4, and that's the beauty about this move, bishop to e6, that's much, much more powerful, I think, than this move king to h8, look at this, you can cover maybe with your knight, but now this one is coming into the game, you can even pick up the queen, but now we hit, uh, simply the knight here on e2. You pick up here the queen, but now the rook is coming into the game. Look of this uh, beautiful, beautiful attacking flow. Uh, king to e1 you can play, but now we trade off. You pick up maybe even the pawn on g3, but now look at this. Rook to f1 and it's game over here for white. Really, really monstrous tactical sequence. So see, bishop to e3 in this particular position is not possible. So this whole concept to play here the early g3 move is forcing here again white to react so uh, let's see after move uh, um uh, bishop uh, pardon me f takes g3 by stockfish 16 here clover simply took bishop takes g3 but now stockfish gets another tempo so you see with every move stockfish is continuing the attacking flow is simply continuing um uh, here uh, the attacking opportunities here on the king side we have bishop to f2 rook to b8 and now bishop to a7 but here Stockfish makes, I think, a huge decision because Stockfish will eventually lose the rook. It doesn't matter. But my question here for you is, what bishop would you love to get for the rook here? Would you love to get uh, white's light square bishop or would you like to get white's dark square bishop? I think white's dark square bishop is much, much more powerful because it protects the dark squares here. So that's why Stockfish is saying, if you want to get my rook, at least you'll have to give up your dark square bishop for the rook, not your light square bishop. So that's why Stockfish continues with this idea. Knight to h5, now many, many dark square problems here. Clover takes, queen takes b8, but okay, look at this. This position is slowly but surely a position that I think a King's Indian defense player wants to get. Now look at this. Many dark score problems. So F2, G3, F4, uh, E3 weaknesses. Bishop on B7 is a little bit stuck here. Uh, the simply blocked out by its own pawn. Okay. 
the only good progressive idea the, that I see for white is maybe this pawn storm on the queen side, a5, b5, but when we think about it harder, again, you have to make many, many moves in order to make any progress. You're maybe three, four tempi, and then you're maybe attacking something. Meanwhile, I think this attack that black has here is already, already very dangerous. So see, especially because of the dark score problems. Here, after move knight to d3, Stockfish plays now the powerful move knight to g3. We have king to h2. See here, clover plays, I think, a good defensive move. Um, is leaving simply the rook um, unprotected because now Clover actually wants to get rid of many pieces that could attack the Dark Lord and of course this powerful knight on g3 is such a piece that simply provocative here on g3. Even if you play something like, I don't know, sorry, king to f2 here, even if you try to escape with your king, because in the king's Indian, sometimes you're also trying to escape towards uh, the queen side here. It's also a common idea, common plan uh, in the king's Indian. I've seen it many times, maybe not in the same position, but as a defensive plan, you will see in many king's Indians that, that white is tr really trying to escape with the queen, uh, king on the queen side. But now, after king to f2, this is not working because queen to a7 is going to happen. You can maybe step back, but now look at this. Queen to e3, simply winning the game, you can cover, but now look at this, knight to f4, you keep the attacking flow, really, really wild stuff, so it's really bad position here for um, for white, so as I said, black uh, will attack simply this dark horse that were provoked by this trade of uh, bishop against the rook, so in my opinion, a bad, bad position here for white, so you see, after move knight to g3, that's why king to h2 was played by uh, the clover engine, stockfish continues now with the move bishop to h6, this is the way they go, because when the bishop was on g7, it was of course blocked out by its own pawn on e5, and it, this move bishop to h6 also you see many times in the king's indian it's a common maneuver it's a common improvement of the piece in the king's indian structures very very nice positional move here by stockfish and now comes i think the critical i don't know tactical sequence of this beautiful sharp tactical game so here many things white can play for instance i've first analyzed at home this wasn't played in the game the move a5 because for me it seemed to be natural that white is also a trying to continue with this attacking flow on the king side to keep progressive ideas as i said that's the only chance that you have here from white's perspective but now queen to d8 is coming in a beautiful way into the game and now for instance if you try here maybe the move a6 if you try to make progress further then you get this one h3 what should you do if you play here g takes h3 this wouldn't be good because then you get this one queen to h4 you can maybe get the knight into the game but now with bishop to f4 things get very very unpleasant so here after move h3 uh, after move a6 that we have studied now after move h3 what you could do is of course king to g3 but now the queen comes in a beautiful game uh, it comes into the game in a beautiful way with the move queen to h4 you have to step back with the liver check now the bishop comes here bishop to f1 you have to again step back this bishop is coming into the game you have to take the piece look at this queen to f3 and now after queen to f1 it's a beautiful beautiful and stunning checkmate so see a5 and then a6 is not so good uh here for for white black is simply getting uh too too active here on the king side it's i think a devastating here position uh for for white for instance if uh, you play after move queen to d8 you could maybe try knight to e2 maybe this was a better move instead of this move a6 in order to get a new defender into the game which it also makes sense but then bishop to e3 very very dangerous look at this where this bishop is coming cutting off also the escape route for the king you could maybe try rook to e1 but now queen to g5 you're trying maybe to push the pawn but now knight to e2 look at this knight to f4 keeping the attack queen to f1 and now queen to g3 with h3 is simply destroying the whole defense of whites in my opinion a messed up game look at this g takes h3 bishop to h3 i think you can resign the game immediately so let's go back as i said this was our analysis after a potential a5 move what you could do really as i said i took my time here because i was very curious what kind of a defense white could play here for instance you don't have to play the move a5 you could maybe uh, get immediately the knight on e2 you can get it immediately into defense without losing an extra tempo here but then again, it's very tricky. Again, this maneuver, queen to d8, you maybe are trying to trade off the pieces, but now look at this. Now we play h takes g3. If you play king to g3, then queen to h4 is a beautiful checkmate. Even if you play something like a5 that we have seen, then again, this whole idea with bishop to e3 is working. We have seen this was also devastating, devastating uh, here for white. So as I said, 
Afro move bishop to h6, no, no a5 was played, no knight to e2 was played here. The clover engine tried to play the move rook to e1, but now stockfish plays a beautiful move, king to h7, a calm move, but gives also here a black the opportunities to attack the g file. Also, a very often played a very common maneuver to liberate the g file for some potential rook activities. Here, clover continued now with the move a5, stockfish continues with the beautiful h3. What should you do here? For instance, if you play king to g3, this wouldn't be good. Again, queen to d8 is winning the game. And now, probably many of us think, okay, finally I can escape with my king on f2. But now we pick up the pawn on g2. This is the way to go. Look at this. You're trying to escape, but now the queen is coming in a beautiful way into the game. This uh, bishop and queen battery is simply undefendable. And now there's nothing that can be done. For instance, after move uh, here, after move knight to uh, g takes h3 that you could play instead of king takes g3 now we have this resource knight to h4 really really well stuff again if you try king to g3 then you see the beauty of this move king to h7 the g file gets open and again maybe you're trying to escape but now the rook is coming in such a such a spectacular way into the game look at this rook to g2 you're trying to escape we double here um, on the g file and now you can resign after a couple more moves. for instance after move knight to h4 you don't have to pick up of course the knight on g3 what you could do and it seemed to me also like a natural move, maybe f4, locking some attacking chances for, for black. But now again, it gets very, very tricky. Look at this. Rook to f4 would be here the winning idea. After knight to f4, bishop to f4, look at this. This bishop comes in a beautiful and spectacular way into the game. The king is naked here, in my opinion. A messed up game. It's game over here for white. Really, really, really wild stuff. So after move h3, we have seen now. Uh, g takes h3. King to g, so g takes h3. King to g3 are not working now clover finally um, got the knight into the game with knight to e2 we have knight takes e2 by stockfish we have now g3 um very very strange idea but for instance if you play now rook to e2 if you are trying to get your piece into the game uh, then look at this again this idea h takes g2 you could maybe try rook to g2 but now again this queen to d8 move this queen to d8 move was so devastating through the whole game for white what should you do maybe you're trying to escape the knight is coming into the game and maybe you're trying to escape again also with your rook but now the queen is coming you're trying again this whole concept to escape on the queen side but now after king to e2 queen to e3 is a beautiful beautiful checkmate so uh, really really stunning stunning tactics here by stockfish 16 so really really impossible impossible to defend this position so let's go back uh, instead of this move um uh, let's see here rook to e2 as we said h takes g2 rook to g2 what you could do um here um instead of this um after queen to d8 you could of course also try here maybe to give up the rook for a knight because we have seen that the knight is very very powerful maybe it's also time to give up some materials to give back some material here to black but look at this again queen to h4 you have to escape now this bishop is coming into the game now we take we can't even get with our king closer you're trying to escape but now look at this rook to f3 is winning the game really really well stuff you don't have time to escape look at this if you try king to f3 then we deliver a check you have to play here this bishop is coming into the game and now after a queen to h1 it would be a stunning and immortal beautiful checkmate with this beautiful piece activity really really wild stuff so you see after move knight to e2 you don't have even time here to pick up the knight on e2 this was devastating devastating position here for white in the game g3 was played by uh, the clover engine knight to d4 look at this a beautiful octopus knight we have now in the center of the board rook to e2 queen to d8 knight to e1 Finally, Clover is somehow trying to defend this position, but now again, this maneuver, queen to g5. The dark square problems are always huge, huge problems in white's position. Look at this, rook to b2, rook is coming here in the game on g, uh, g8. Knight to d3 uh, was played by the Clover engine, and now comes another beautiful, spectacular move here by Stockfish 16. Stockfish played a beautiful knight to h4. This is the way they go. What should you do? For instance, if you try g takes h4, then there is this problem. Queen to g3, you get the king on h1. Knight to f3, in some lines, is of course also threatening to checkmate because if you try queen to f1, we're playing this idea. Bishop to d2. We're cutting off uh, here this defense of the second rank, a beautiful interference tactic it would be. You play, of course, rook to d2. We play knight to d2. You're trying, of course, to simplify the game, but now after queen to f3, king to h2, rook to g2, this is game over. You have now this double check and after queen to g2, 
you. It's game over. It's a beautiful, beautiful checkmate. So see, after knight to h4, you don't have time to pick up the knight on h4. You have to play king to h1. Stockfish gets into the game with on uh, with the queen on g3. F4 by the clover engine trying again desperately to lock somehow the position on the king side. But now after moving knight to f3 in this particular position, actually clover resigns because. It's a forced uh, checkmate in um, in four. Look at this. You can, as I said, bring the queen into the game, but now there is a beautiful, beautiful tactical sequence uh, that, unfortunately, for the beauty of the game, was not played. As I said, after knight to f3 and uh, uh, here in this particular position, Clover resigned. But as I said, after queen to f1, maybe you can pause now the video and try to see now the winning idea here for White. So White moves and wins the game. What would you do now in this particular position? Okay, here the winning idea is a beautiful queen sacrifice. That's the way they go. Rook to g2. Uh, we have uh, g8 take g2. You can pick up, of course, now the piece, but there's simply no good defense against rook to h2 or rook to g1 checkmate. Whatever you do, even if you cover the second rank, you get uh, here the checkmate on the first rank. Even if you not do anything, of course, then you get checkmated here on h2. So game over here for white for sure. So... Poop. This was epic. This was spectacular. This was so brutal. And I'm really glad that I found this game because uh, you have mentioned many times, uh, and that's my problem also here in my YouTube chat. You mentioned many times that you want to see, of course, many games with the black pieces by Stockfish, but there are not so many. Believe me or not, there are not so many winning games for black in top engine level. And when they are, some winning games by black in top engine level, they have to play sometimes such a bad line for all, for white. And that's the game that I basically don't want to cover because I don't want to show you here on my YouTube chess channel bad, bad openings. I don't want to show an opening that gives maybe Black immediately an opportunity to have maybe a I don't know, plus two position and then we see how Stockfish is throwing. I, I wanted to show you here always on my YouTube chess channel playable uh, openings, playable lines, playable opportunities because that's the thing that I want to show here on my YouTube chess channel. Not, not that of course some other lines are not working but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say because it's really really hard to find decent games and that's what we want to see we don't want to see grob openings because probably no one will play the grob opening we want to see decent but of course also spectacular openings but i think now the king's indian when we see the new approaches by stockfish also by some other top engines of course uh the king's indian is playable again but you have to be really tactical beast you have to see this wild lines you can be my guest of course, Stockfish is a different monster. Stockfish can play whatever Stockfish wants to play. But in my opinion, really beautiful, beautiful game here played by Stockfish 16. So, okay. I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really, really enjoyed it a lot because this was always my favorite opening against D4. I stopped to play a little bit of King's Indian, but probably I'll get back because I'll study more games played by Stockfish 16. If you want to see more immortal, brutal chess games like this, check out our common chess games played by computers where we have covered more than 500 games in top engine levels check them out please they're really really cool and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel what do we say chess is the best of course